Hello friends, welcome to Affairs Cloud Learn to Lead. This is Ashu and today we will discuss very important current affairs of 3rd of August 2021. You can see two best images of the day, but today we will discuss very important and the most important current affairs. So watch this video till last, but I am requesting you all the students that you have to download our application named as Careers Cloud and you can download from the description box link. You can also log in with your email ID and after login, you can click on this crack current fair section to subscribe a current fairs for one year as well as for two year. Both the subscription prices are very much low. If you see the price, you will definitely surprise. But the most important thing that we are covering 90 to 95 percent of that current fairs which can come in your exam. This is the genuinity. This is the hard work of affairs cloud team. But how we are covering this current fair section? We are providing you daily section and in this section, you will receive three things. One is the detailed current fair question and answer format and the quiz section which you can attempt on our application on daily basis. Next is the weekly section. Again, you will receive three things. One is the detailed current fair, question and answer format and the quiz section which you can attempt on our application on weekly basis. The most important section is monthly and we are providing four type of PDFs. One is the detailed current fair, question and answer format of current fairs, best 100 current fair that is also provided in the form of question and answer and the pocket PDF. It means the two liner and the three liners current fair will be provided to you so that you can revise in quick format before your exam. But to enhance your performance further, we are also providing topic wise current fair. We are covering 20 most important topics which are very important for every type of exam. It means if you want to cover one topic related all news just from single PDF, then you can use this topic wise PDF. If you are a banking aspirant, then we are providing three things. One is the detail and the question and answer format of current fairs only related to banking and economy. And the third thing is the quiz section, which you can attempt on our application on monthly basis. If you want to cover all the past current fair of 2021 just from single PDF, then you can use this exam PDF. And guys, we are providing you detailed budget and economic survey under the special current fair section. And we are also providing expected question and answer, which examiner can ask from the budget and economic survey. To enhance your state performance, it means if you are appearing for your respective state exam, then we are covering every state and every union territory current fair. So guys, uh, there is no different different subscription of these topics. We are providing all these things under one subscription. You have to just download our application careers cloud. You can log in with your email ID and after that you can click on this crack current fair section to subscribe our current fairs for one year as well as for two years. For the beginners or if you are starting your current fair preparation now, then I am suggesting you to subscribe for two years. But both the subscription prices are very much low and we are providing 10% extra discount on that minimal price if you use this code ASH10. If you have any query, you can email us or you can contact us on this number. So let's start today's current fair that is 3rd of August 2021. But I am again requesting you all the students that you have to like this video, share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform. And guys remember, you can join a telegram group from the description box link and we are starting with the most important question sections and here is the first question who is appointed as the 25th controller journal of accounts we are not talking about controller journal of india we are talking about controller controller journal of account which is also known as cga you have to remember the number that he is appointed as on the number of 25th so government of india has recently appointed deepak das so answer of this question is c deepak das in 1986, 1986 batch of Indian Civil Account Service, officer as the 25th Controller General of Accounts under the Ministry of Finance, Department of Expenditure. It means this post comes under the Ministry of Finance under the Department of Expenditure. And guys, remember this CGA or you can say Controller General of Account is the principal accounting advisor to the government of India and they will set up uh, and manage a better management accounting system. And you can also see here the picture of Deepak Das and he takes charge as a new controller general of accounts which comes under the Ministry of Finance. He replaced Soma Roy Burman. She was uh, recently appointed as the uh, head of this department. You can say the controller general of accounts, but now uh, she was replaced. And prior to his appointment, this person Deepak Das, he was the principal chief controller of accounts in the central board of direct taxes. That was also very uh, good position. And uh, uh, the full body like this CGA uh, will prepare the accounts of the union and the state government and also control the exchequer and the internal audits. And especially the article 150 of the constitution, the president forms the accounts of the union and the states on the advice of this body. So this is very important. So as you have to remember, article 150 is important. 
and the name Deepak Das here is important and he was appointed 25th Controller General of Accounts under the Ministry of Finance Department of Expenditure. But other options or the other appointments are very important. You can see here the Kareem Khan. He was recently appointed as new chief. Remember, new chief prosecutor, new chief prosecutor of the International Cricket Council. RSOD, very important appointment because he become the member of board of International Dairy Federation. Again, very important. Next, uh, Maiva Sudan, very important appointment, not appointment you can say. Uh, she was the first woman from Jammu and Kashmir to be inducted as a fighter pilot in the Indian Air Force. Remember, she belongs to Jammu and Kashmir and she uh, became the first woman from Jammu and Kashmir to be inducted as a fighter pilot in the Indian Air Force. So remember these three appointments, these are very, very important. Now we are moving to the next question. Who has been selected for the Lok Manya Tilak National Award 2021? Lok Manya means I am talking about Bal Gangadhar Tilak because this title was given to Bal Gangadhar Tilak and uh, with the name of Bal Gangadhar Tilak this award was started which was known as Lok Manya Tilak National Award and it is for the 2021. So answer of this question is very simple the founder of Serum Institution of India that is Cyrus Poonawala. So answer is B. So you can see here the picture of Cyrus Poonawala or you can say the father of Adar Poonawala and uh, he was named as a recipient of Lok Manya Tilak National Award for 2021. So remember, Cyrus Poonawala is the founder and the currently chairman of the Serum Institute of India. Remember, the CEO is the son of uh, Cyrus Poonawala, that is Adar Poonawala. But uh, uh, we are talking about the founder, then it is Cyrus Poonawala. And he was honored with his work during the COVID-19 pandemic by manufacturing Covishield vaccine. So guys, remember, Covishield is prepared by Serum Institute of India. Second is Covaxin. It is prepared by Bharat Biotech and thereby saving many lives by this vaccine that is known as Covishield. And currently, Serum Institute of India is the world's largest vaccine manufacturer uh, by the number of doses produced and sold globally. And under his leadership, like Cyrus Poonawala, Covishield vaccines are produced on a large scale at affordable price in a record period of time. And guys, remember, Lok Manya Tilak National Award. This is awarded annually since 1983 by the Lok Manya Tilak Trust, which is situated in Maharashtra. And uh, this award is given on the 1st of August. 1st of August because it is the death anniversary of Lok Manya Bal Gangadhar Tilak because he was died on 1st August of 1920. And the award include a cash prize of 1 lakh rupees and a memento and the several prominent personalities from the different fields of life were the recipients of this award. So you have to remember Lok Manya Tilak National Award for 2020 was awarded to Sonam Wangchuk and he was a renowned educational reformist and uh, very famous and uh, especially very famous for the three idiots. So you have to just remember the name of Sonam Wangchuk. So remember Cyrus Poonawala, this is important. Adar Poonawala, you know, he is currently the CEO of uh, Serum Institute of India. Krishan Ella, uh, he is currently, you can say, MD and CEO of Bharat Biotech. You can just remember Dr. Krishna Ella. And Sona Vangchuk, we already covered that Lok Manya Tilak National Award for 2020 was given to this person, Sonam Vangchuk. So guys, remember all these things. Now we are moving to next question. Which state police secured the first position in India under the crime and criminal tracking system? So you have to remember the keyword here, the crime and criminal tracking network system. This is very important. This comes under the Ministry of Home. Ministry of Home. And guys, this is Haryana Police. So Haryana Police ranked on the first position uh, in the India under crime and criminal tracking network system. So remember the Haryana Police with 100% marks. So 100% uh, marks secured the first position in India. So you can see here the second position goes to Gujarat Police and third position goes to Himachal Pradesh Police. Second can be asked if you belongs to specific state. And Haryana secures the first position in the country with 100% of marks in this crime and criminal tracking network system. And guys remember this uh, uh, criminal and crime uh, network system was created for a comprehensive and integrated system for effective policing through e-governance. The main objective is to create a nationwide networking infrastructure for the evolution of the IT enabled modern tracking system around investigation of crime and detection of the criminals. It means uh, in simple word you can say for the investigation of crime and detection of the criminals we will use the information technology system and this information technology system is known as crime and criminal tracking network system. And guys, remember, this system was approved by the cabinet in the year of 2009 and allocation of almost rupees 2000 crore was made for this project. And it is implemented by National Crime Records Bureau. This is very important organization, National Crime Records Bureau. 
and under this scheme state police departments have to upgrade the system under the certain parameters and uh, this system has integrated more than 14000 police station across india so that with the use of it enabled modern tracking system we can uh, use this system for the investigation of crime and detection of the criminals very fastly so guys remember haryana police uh, you can say uh, gets the 100% marks and secured the first position in india under this crime and criminal networking uh, system so now we are moving to next question India assumed the United Nations Security Council presidency for the August 2021. This question is from picture, but this is the most important because India was selected for the uh, temporary time period of two years. Because uh, if you are a member of United Nations Security Council, not a permanent, but a, a non-permanent member, then your time period is two years. And India is selected for 2021 and for 2022. and it is by rotation so india is assuming the presidency under the united nation security council for the month of august 2021 it is only for the one month that is for august 2021 you have to remember this this is important and on 1st august 2021 india the non permanent member of the united nation security council took over the presidency of united nation security council from france so it means for the month of july it was with france now it is uh, for the month of august it uh, it is with india and india will be hosting events related to maritime security peacekeeping and the counter terrorism and guys remember the presidency of the united nation security council is held by each of its member in turn for one month in the gap of one month or you can say in turn for one month following the english alphabetical order for the member states names like after france it is india and as per the turn india become the president of the month of august 2021 after france so through rotation india will also serve the presidency again in the year of 2020 to after the alphabetical order and guys remember india becomes the non permanent member for the eighth time for 2021 2022 this is very important and as a non permanent member of united nation security council under the asia pacific category category for two years like from 1st jan 2021 to 31st of december 2022 and india plans to focus on issue related to the international community especially and guys you have to remember about united nation security council it is a 15 member body out of 15 five are permanent members and uh, 10 are non permanent members and non permanent member time period is 2 years like india and uh, permanent members are like china here france russia united kingdom and united states of america and guys you can also remember this organization was established in 1945 its headquarters is in new york and uh, uh, you can also remember ambassador of india to united nation ambassador of india to united nation is ts trimurthy you can also remember this this is again very very important so guys remember india assume the united nation security council presidency for which month it is for the august 2021 i will ask this question in the later sessions moving to next section it is our very important question section but you have to like this video share this video and subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and please join our telegram group from the description box link and here is the question who won formula now we are talking about formula 1 racing and it is formula 1 hungarian grand prix 2021 and guys this question is very important and you can cover this question as well as in the most important because we are talking about hungarian grand prix and it is the one of the most important grand prix of 2021 but this is not won by the lewis hamilton it is not won by the sebastian vettel it is won by esteban acon or ocon so you can just remember a new name and uh, guys remember uh this person belongs to which country this person belongs to france and he won the formula 1 hungarian grand prix 2021 in the budapest hungary so you can also see here the picture of uh, esteban ocon and he won hungarian grand prix and guys remember it is uh, ocon's maiden f1 victory this is the first victory of this person and you can also remember the 2021 data this is the whole list of 2021 like first race of 2021 under the formula 1 is the bahrain race it was won by the lewis hamilton so uh, portugal and spain was also won by the lewis hamilton so you can remember these three races are won by lewis hamilton and next race won by the lewis hamilton is great britain that was the last from the hungary so these four races won by the lewis hamilton next the famous player uh, in the 2021 is uh, max verstappen you can see emilia romagna and monaco and you can say france styria and austria these races won by the max verstappen so these two players are most important under the formula 1 but guys you can see here the um, 
Uh, odd one out here is the Azerbaijan. You can see it is won by the Sergio Pres, but now it is one more that is Hungary. Hungary Grand Prix or Hungarian Grand Prix is won by Esteban Ocon and he belongs to which country? He belongs to France. Uh, basically, Sebastian Vettel from Germany who finished the second in the race was disqualified after the post-race inspection which revealed insufficient fuel load. So, otherwise, second position was with the Sebastian Vettel but he was disqualified. That's why second position goes to Lewis Hamilton. And with the second place finish, Lewis Hamilton regained the lead in the F1 2021 Drivers' Championship. And this, uh, all Formula 1 racings are organized by FIA, that is Federation International the Automobile. And uh, its headquarter is in Paris, France. So remember these things. Now we are moving to the next question. 44th session of the World Heritage Committee was held in which country? This is very important committee because um, um, according to the reports of this committee, we are adding uh, uh, the World Heritage Sites in the list of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So according to this 44th session, uh, many sites recently added under the UNESCO World Heritage Site and this meeting was held in China. Remember, it was held in China and exact places was Ho. Was Ho. So you have to remember exact places was Ho. But another important question under this section here is, which is India's 40th World Heritage Site recently included in the UNESCO list? Earlier we covered 39th World Heritage Site, but now it is the 40th. It means total sites in India which are included under the UNESCO World Heritage Sites are 40 and latest is the 40th. 40th is Dola Vira, which is a Harappan site and guys remember Dola Vira is in which state? It is in Gujarat. It is a Harappan site. And uh, 39th, you have to remember, 39th is Kakatiya, Rudreshwara or Ramappa temple, which is situated in Telangana. So you have to remember 39th is this and 40th is this. You have to remember the exact number because it can be asked. And Jaipur city was uh, added in 2019 before Kakatiya, Rudreshwara, the uh, last site which was added that was the Jaipur city. So remember this, River, uh, Riverine Island of Majoli in Assam, that was already a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So you can see here, Hadappan era city, that is Dola Vira, inscribed uh, into the UNESCO World Heritage List. And it is added under the 44th session of World Heritage Committee, which is held in China, exact places, Fuzhou. And you can see here, total number of sites on the UNESCO World Heritage uh, 2 now is 111154. You can remember exact number of sites if you want, that is 111154. And two sites were included from India, I already covered, that is 39th uh, is the Telangana uh, temple, that is the Ramappa temple and uh, uh, next one is 40th is the Dolavira. And remember, Dolavira is located in the uh, Khadir Beit island of the run of Kutch desert wildlife sanctuary in the great run of Kutch. And Dolavira, locally known as the Kotda Timba, which was the southern center of the Hadappan civilization was added to the list. And this site was discovered in 1967-68 by a uh, very important person or you can say archaeologist that is J.P. Joshi. J.P. Joshi. And uh, he was uh, belongs to Archaeological Survey of India and it is the fifth largest of the eight major Hadappan site that is Dolavira site. So remember this, this is very important. And the 45th session, it means the next session which will be held in 2022, it will be held in Russia, exact places Kazan or the Kazan. You can remember, 44th session we were talking about, it was held in China, 45th will be held in Russia. So this is again very important. And recently, World Heritage Committee delisted Liverpool Maritime Mercantile City from the World Heritage List because of uh, excessive construction around this area. So that's why this World Heritage Committee, uh, the meeting held in China, delisted Liverpool Maritime mercantile city from the world heritage list so you have to remember this because we already covered this question in the most important section and guys remember this is unesco because uh, this is the only organization which is uh, declaring the world heritage sites and director general is audrey azole and uh, headquarters is in paris france so we are moving to the next question which company became the first digital investment platform who launched the unified payment interface based auto pay functionally for the mutual fund investments or you can say the for mutual fund SIPs and name of this organization is PhonePay or name of this digital provider company is PhonePay. So you can see here PhonePay launched UPA based auto pay for the mutual fund SIP investment or you can say systematically investment plans. SIP stands for systematically investment plan. What is SIP? SIP is an investment route offered by the mutual fund wherein one can invest a fixed amount in a mutual fund scheme of their choice at regular interval. Like uh, after one month you are investing like uh, uh, 1000 rupees every month 
or after every two months, after every three months. So regular interval and you are investing in the mutual fund and uh, it is a fixed amount, then it is known as SIP. And SIP are the open-ended, that is customers can initiate, pause, restart and terminate a SIP at any time. And this UPI AutoPay will enable its customers to set up their mutual fund SIPs in three steps. Like you can say, uh, selecting the fund, first you have to select the fund, entering the monthly SIP investment amount, next authentication with the UPI PIN to make regular uh, investments. And the UPI AutoPay option for the SIP is available for all the existing and the new customers on the phone pay application. So this is very important and the UPI AutoPay was made available even when the phone pay customer opt for monthly SIP through any of the mutual fund investment option through the phone pay. So you have to just remember that monthly installments will automatically will be paid through your wallet or you can say through your uh, uh, transaction platform but uh, it is automatic and it is through your UPI transaction. So remember it is phone pay. And guys, you can also remember about PhonePay. Uh, this platform has over 307 million registered users. That is a huge thing. And it was started in 2015, but in 2016, it was acquired by which company? It was acquired by Flipkart. So this question was very important at that time. Headquarter was in Mumbai and CEO is Samir Nigam, not Sonu Nigam. It is Samir Nigam. So guys, remember, moving to next question. Who became the youngest person in the world to reach the summit of K2 or you can say Godwin Astrain? or Godwin Austin. So you can remember, uh, we are talking about K2 mountain, which is situated in the Pakistan occupied Kashmir. You can see here, this is K2. And uh, it is the second highest mountain, like 8611 meter. It is the total height of K2. And it is situated in the Karakoram range. That is the another most range of India. You can see here, this is the another most range. After that, it is a Ladakh range. And after that, it is a Zaskar range. So these are the three another most ranges all over India. So uh, this K2 is a part of Karakoram range and the person belongs to Pakistan, Pakistan and name of this person is Seheroj Kasif. So you can see answer of this question is D and you can see here Seheroj Kasif, you can see here the picture and this is the Pakistan flag, 19 year old from Lahore and he is just a 19 year old from Lahore, Pakistan became the youngest person in the world to reach the summit of Mount Everest. And Kashif became the youngest Pakistani to scale the Mount Everest also. This is 8848 meter and the highest peak of the world. And Pakistan, Nepal and the China, these three countries like Pakistan, China and Nepal are the home to the 14 highest peaks in the world also known as the 8000 tiers. Remember 8000 tiers, Pakistan, China and Nepal. So maximum or you can say the uh, 14 highest peaks in the world are situated under these three countries. So that's why this is very important. So guys, you have to remember the name that is Seheroj Kashif and he belongs to which country? He belongs to Pakistan. Now we are moving to next question. A book titled Nehru, Tibet and China authored by whom? We covered this question so many times, so many times guys, because this, uh, this book was uh, uh, basically released uh, now, but it was, uh, you can say, authored one month before. So very important book, Nehru, Tibet and China. And this book is written by very famous person, Avtar Singh Basin. So you can say A.S. Basin is the answer, B is the answer. You can see here, this is the book cover page, A.S. Basin, Nehru, Tibet and China, especially you can see here the picture of Dalai Lama. So the book features the various details and events that took place from the independence of India, like from 1947, to the 1962 till Indochina war. And the book on the Indochina relationship focuses on the Tibet area especially, boundary issues before the war and after the war, occupation of the Tibet by China, and you can say uh, uh, fleeing of the 14th uh, Dalai Lama from the Tibet to India. And uh, he's basically uh, took asylum in the area of Himachal Pradesh, very famous, that is the Dharamshala area. And the authentic and the credible narrative of the book is written with the aid of the official documents and the archives. And guys, you can remember this person is very important. Avtar Singh Basin has served in the Ministry of External Affairs, Ministry of External Affairs for around 30 years and retired in 1993 as the director of the historical division. So guys, you can remember this book name. It is very important, Nehru, Tibet and China. And guys, another authors are again very famous and they also wrote very famous books like Shiv Shankar Menon, you can see here, he wrote a book like India and Asian Geopolitics and Asian Geopolitics. You can remember this. Preet Mohan Singh Malik, he also wrote a history about Sikkim, that how Sikkim become the part of India. Sikkim, a history of intrigue and alliance. 
Amish Raj Mulbi, we covered this question again so many times. All roads lead north. All roads leads to north. So this is basically a book that uh, Nepal is uh, basically turning to China. Nepal turned to China. So you have to remember these three books because it is related to the international relations, especially India and China. Now we are moving to the next question. Which bank has launched a SIM binding? So this is the keyword for you, SIM binding feature in its digital banking platform. And I'm give, giving you hint that the digital banking platform is known as YONO or YONO Lite. So YONO stands for you only need one. And this is the digital platform of which bank? It is SBI. So you can see here, SBI launched SIM binding feature in the YONO or the YONO Lite application. So this is very important. So it, uh, it is aimed at protecting customers from various digital frauds because State Bank of India has launched this SIM binding feature in the digital banking platform, which is known as YONO or you only need one. And the technology allows only one user per device with a registered mobile number. It means the SIM binding feature will work with the basic rule of one mobile device, one user, one registered mobile number. So this is very simple. It means uh, uh, the main is just to protecting customer from the various digital frauds. And guys, remember about SBI establishment. Uh, it was on 1st of July 1955. According to the SBI Act of 1955, chairman is Dinesh Kumar Khara. Headquarter is in Mumbai and tagline is the banker to every bank. So you have to remember this. Now we are moving to next question. Which bank signed a MOU or the memorandum of understanding with the IIT Bombay to provide a credit facility to the startups and the small businesses because they are very much stressed due to COVID-19. So that's why they need uh, some credit facility and IIT Bombay and this bank signed a MOU to provide this credit facility to the small businessmen. And answer of this question is very simple. Answer is Indian Bank. So A is the answer. So you can see here, Indian Bank signs MOU with IIT Bombay. And it is one of the IIT's organization, IIT Bombay's organization, which is known as Society for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, uh, under which this uh, MOU was signed. And it is for extended exclusive credit facility to the startups and micro, small and medium enterprises. And you can see here, Indian Bank signed a MOU with the Society for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, especially it is a, you can say, umbrella organization of IIT Bombay. And it is to provide a credit facility to the startups and the small businesses through the Indian Bank's loan product, which is already launched in 2020, which is known as Ind Spring Board. And under this MOU, this IIT Bombay will support the bank by referring the startups. It means all the startups will be referred by IIT Bombay or you can say Society for Innovation and Entrepreneurship and the loan or the credit will be provided by Indian Bank. And it is according to the need of the financial assistance based on their credentials or you can say the past experience. And the Cine IIT Bombay will support the bank by referring the startup. So you have to remember this. And guys, recently Indian Bank also launched MSME Prerna, especially in the Maharashtra area. And it is a program to empower the MSMEs, entrepreneur, you can say it is a capacity building program for the entrepreneurs. And recently Indian Bank also signed a MOU, recently we covered this question two or three days back, with IIT Gohati. Remember, IIT Gohati. And uh, it is a IIT Gohati Technological Incubation Center for financial startups under the bank loan uh, product which is also known as Ind Spring Board. So guys remember uh, under the Ind Spring Board uh, this bank also signed a pact with the IIT Guwahati and also with the IIT Bombay. And guys remember this Ind Spring Board. Uh, in October 2020 Indian Bank launched this uh, Ind Spring Board in collaboration with IIT Madras. So three IITs are there. One is Madras, second is Bombay and third is Guwahati. And this Ind Spring Board is with the IIT Madras. And it is uh, uh, for the you can say uh, financing the startups up to rupees 50 crore uh, which require any type of the working capital. So guys you have to remember this. Now we are moving to next question but you have to remember about Indian Bank. Indian Bank was established in 1907. Its headquarter is in Chennai. Uh, I mean I am talking about Tamil Nadu. Headquarter is in uh, Tamil Nadu and MD and CEO is Padam Ja Chundru. Padam Ja Chundru. And uh, tagline is your own bank. Your own bank. Now we are moving to next question. So this is very simple question. You can just remember the question as in slide. It is not so much important, but you have to remember this Krishi Karn or Krishi Karna project launched in which state to promote high technological farming instead of the traditional farming. We have to use high technological methods for the farming. And this is known as Krishi Karna project. And it is started in Kerala and exact place is 
Trivendrapuram. So you can remember that in Trivendrapuram, Kerala, it is started to promote the high technological farming, and under this project, mini poly houses or you can say green houses uh, will be built up. Uh, and the cost will be provided by agriculture society of the kerala but you have to just remember about krishi karna and it belongs to kerala and it is a high technological farming platform now we are moving to next question it is just a very simple question so now we are moving to important question you have to like this video share this video as maximum as possible and you have to subscribe this channel if you are new on this platform and please join our telegram group from the description box who addressed the second indo us services summit so remember this keyword it is a services summit it means I am talking about Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So, who is Union Minister of Commerce and Industry? It is Piyush Goyalji. So, answer of this question is C. So, you can see here the smiling face of Piyush Goyal because uh, he was not removed as a Union Cabinet Minister. Maximum Ministers are removed. So, he is very happy. And Union Minister of Commerce and Industry, Piyush Goyalji, addressed second Indo-US Services Summit. And you can uh, see here. Uh, this Piyush Goyal remarked the 12-fold increase in the services export if we are comparing the 2001, 2002 and 2020-21 because in the 20 years we expanded our services exports like from 17 billion dollar to 205 billion dollar and he stated that the services trade as an important tool for the expanding business ties between India and the United States of America and the area where India and US could cooperate uh, with mutual benefits include you can say hospitality financial technological area, agri-tech area, law, cyber security, healthcare, tourism and so many things. And he also mentioned the combination of the US innovation, technology, research and quality education with India's skill and intelligent manpower at a competitive cost. So guys remember Union Minister of Commerce and Industry is Piyush Goyal. He is currently member of Rajya Sabha constituency is Maharashtra. But you can also remember Anupriya Singh Patel. Uh, she was uh, recently appointed as the Minister of State and uh, his constitu uh, her constituency is Mirzapur. This is important, Mirzapur, Uttar Pradesh. And one, another uh, Minister of State is Som Prakash and he belongs to Punjab and his constituency is Hoshiarpur. Nirmala Sitaraman, you know, uh, Union Minister of Finance, S.J. Shankar, you know, Union Minister of External Affairs. Moving to next, it is from the picture 2021 World Lung Cancer Day uh, observed on the 1st of August. So, World Lung Cancer Day is annually observed across the globe on 1st of August to create awareness about the lung cancer, one of the most common forms of the cancer across the globe and preventive measure against the lung cancer. And the day also aims to promote overall lung health. So, remember this. And uh, 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 the one symbol is used like white ribbon is used or you can say uh, pearl ribbon is used uh, or this color is used for the lung cancer awareness. And uh, the month of the November is observed as the Lung Cancer Awareness Month. So, you can remember November month is uh, known as the Lung Cancer Awareness Month. So, it is observed every year on the 1st of August. Now, we are moving to the one-liner important point. Here is the first point. Sri Lankan cricketer Ishuru Udana retires from the international cricket. So, guys, remember the name Ishuru Udana and he belongs to which country? He belongs to Sri Lanka. So, uh, Sri Lankan all-rounder Ishuru Udana, he was just 33 years old, announced his retirement from the international cricket. But Udana will, however, playing domestic cricket and will be available for the franchise tournaments. But you have to remember the country, Sri Lanka. Next, former England cricketer Mike Hendrick passed away. You have to just remember the name and the country. This is important. And he was former England cricketer and renowned pace bowler. Renowned pace bowler. Mike Hendrick, who has played around 30 tests and 22 one days internationally representing England, has passed away. And uh, uh, his uh, first test debut was against Indian team. This is unique, Indian team, in 1974. And he was the leading bowler at the 1979 World Cup, who took 10 wickets from 5 matches. Next, uh, next question is, researchers discovers new frog species, which is known as Minervaraya Penthali in Western Guards. You can see here the picture. Uh, this is Minervaraya Penthali and it is named after renowned plant geneticist for uh, Professor Deepak Penthal. So, you have to just remember the name and uh, a team of researchers from the Delhi University has dec discovered this new uh, frog species and it is found in Western Guards. Remember, Western Guards. And uh, a new frog species has been named after a Professor Deepak Penthal and uh, he was renowned, uh, you can say, plant geneticist and uh, the former Vice Chancellor of the Delhi University. And uh, there are, uh, uh, you, you can uh, see this uh, frog type and this frog type is endemic to the southern western guards and are found especially in the Kerala and the Tamil Nadu. So that's why we are talking about the western guards here. 
112th annual day of ncdc celebrated and uh, uh, presided by the union health minister new union health minister that is mansukh l mandavia ji so it is 112th annual day celebration of the national center for disease control ncdc it is situated in new delhi and its function was presided over by the union minister mansukh uh, uh, lakshman bhai mandavia ji or you can say mansukh l mandavia ji who is currently the union minister of health and family welfare and the union minister also launched the national health adaptation plan on air pollution a national health adaptation plan on the heat along with the infographic so two national plan was launched one is for the air pollution second is for the heat so remember this next ministry of minority affairs observed muslim women right day on the august of 1 2021 in new delhi so this is important because uh, this day also celebrated as the second anniversary of the enactment of the law against the triple talaq which was uh passed in 2019 it is a muslim women protection of rights on marriage act of 2019 so ministry of minority affair decided to observe muslim women right day annually on the 1st of august across india to celebrate the enactment of the law against triple talaq and the central government enacted this law on same date like 1st of august 2019 that has made the practice of instant triple talaq as a criminal offense since then there has been a decline of almost 82% in the triple talaq cases so this is very good thing and i think many students don't know this uh, that uh, which is the first muslim nation who abolished this law uh, it was egypt guys egypt was the first nation who abolished this triple talaq system in 1929 that is uh, you can say very uh, past information egypt was the first muslim nation who abolished this law in 1929 so ministry of minority affairs we were talking about who is the union minister it is mukhtar abbas nakvi ji remember mukhtar abbas nakvi ji and his constituency is jharkhand and he is currently the member of rajya sabha he is also appointed deputy leader of the house this is very important deputy leader of house in the rajya sabha that is mukhtar abbas nakvi ji next uh, you can also remember the one another day international day of friendship 2021 which is celebrated by the united nation on 30th of july but this is important United Nation International Day celebrated every year on the every year on the 30th of July to highlight the role of friendship between the people country culture and the individuals towards the peace efforts this is also known as the friendship day but in India it is celebrated on the first sunday of the month of august remember first sunday of the month of august so that's why it is celebrated on the first of august this year so remember in india it is celebrated on the first sunday of the august but uh, united nation celebrated every year on the 30th of july next uh, one line point is world breast feeding week 2021 from august to 7 so united nation world breast feeding week is annually observed across the globe on the first week of the august to encourage breast feeding with the contributes to the health of the babies across the globe and the theme of world breast feeding week is protect breast feeding a shared responsibility so theme will not be asked because breast feeding in the theme so that's why it is very genuine to recognize the answer so it will not be asked so you have to just remember that the first week of august is also celebrated as the breast feeding week now we are moving to the question of the day what was the question of 1st and 2nd of august 2021 very simple question what is the population limit at a place under which the banks do not require a license from the rbi to open a branch but uh, uh, this is uh, vary according to uh, rural area urban area semi rural area but if the examiner asking this type of question uh, not mentioned like rural semi urban or the urban area then answer should be only one that is d 50000 so guys remember at present indian banks no longer require a license from the reserve bank of india for opening a branch at a place with population below than 50000 but if they specifically asked for the rural semi urban or the urban area it is according to like for the rural area it is 10000 but otherwise uh, you don't have to remember this uh, vital information you have to just remember uh, the main information that is 50000 now we are moving to the question of the day who can work as the banking cor- correspondent so it is very simple question you can answer very easily even uh, every student i think know this and you have to answer me only in the comment box i am waiting your answer you have to like this video share this video as maximum as possible and please subscribe this channel these three things will motivate us definitely and please uh, press this bell button and join our telegram channel for the uh, for the notifications and it is of your cloud promise it will boost your confidence in the general awareness section definitely it is my personal promise that if you are watching the videos regularly and if you are reading our current fields from the pdfs you can subscribe our pdfs from our application for one year as well as for two year price is very much low but on that minimal price we are also providing 10% extra discount 
so your current fear section will definitely go strong and guys don't take life so much serious life is fun always be happy like this and thank you for watching this video and take care bye bye